While the hot sunny beaches of the south tend to draw the most attention, there are many wonderful things to explore in northern Spain, and specifically the Basque country, which has its own customs, language, and culture. Today we're here in the beautiful city of Bilbao, taking in the sights and seeing what all this hidden Spanish gem has to offer. I'm Kaylee. I'm Josh, and this is Expats of Where Explores, the channel that brings you information and experiences from foreigners living all around the world. Bilbao is a beautiful Spanish city surrounded by mountains and built on the Nervion River, located seven miles inland from the Bay of Biscay. After industrial productivity declined in the late 20th century, the city fell slightly out of use until it underwent a massive revival, focusing on city planning and eco-friendliness. For more than a decade, Bilbao has been winning various awards for its urbanism and the infrastructure investments that have made this such a clean and convenient place to live. While the Basque country is generally known for beautiful architecture, chocolatey wine, and delicious cuisine like paella, the city of Bilbao is especially famous for its museums and modern art. There has definitely been a great effort made here to blend traditional culture and modernist advancements and aesthetics. This is the most famous building in Bilbao. The Guggenheim Museum was designed by Frank Gehry and opened in 1997 to house important works of modern art, including the famous Jeff Koons piece known to locals as El Puppy. El like Puppy? It. El Poopy? I like El Puppy. <laughs> El Puppy. This city certainly values the beauty of nature as well, with parks of various sizes around every corner and an eco-friendly attitude towards all aspects of life. A fourth of the vehicles driven here are electric in an effort to reduce any negative impact on the environment as well as keeping road noise down a bit. There are so many outdoor activities for nature lovers with gorgeous walks to be found in parks or along the river that runs through the city and easy access to hiking and beaches just outside of town. Truly is a city absolutely full of life and activity. The stunning River Valley location certainly does make it easy to get involved in more adventurous outdoor sports though the weather might sometimes make you consider a good museum day instead. If the hot summers of southern Spain aren't your thing, the mild temperatures here up north can certainly be a breath of fresh air. Be prepared though, 45% of days here will be at least a little bit rainy. That's how they keep those hills so green. That's right. Indoors and outdoors, there are so many wonderful things to do and see in Bilbao. Speaking English will certainly work for the more touristy activities and areas, but most other communication happens in Spanish or Basque. Learning either of these languages would be pretty essential for living in this area. The prevalence of both of these distinct languages is the reason why public schools here are bilingual, teaching in both Spanish and Basque, with additional language options later in school. There are also four international schools in Bilbao, one French, one German, one British, and one American IB. For higher education, there are two universities situated in Bilbao, and several other schools with connections to the city. On the whole, Bilbao is considered to be a very family-friendly city and a great place to raise kids since there are many activities and resources catering to this demographic. In addition to the many green spaces, cultural activities, and quality of education, Bilbao boasts comprehensive medical care facilities run by the Basque Healthcare System, a subset of the Spanish National Health System. Spain has a very efficient universal healthcare system, but many people choose to supplement what doesn't fall under this by also getting private insurance. There are a variety of different jobs that one could hope to do here, though many vacancies fall in the service sector and do not have particularly high salaries. However, healthcare workers, civil engineers, and data specialists are some of the most sought after categories and might be more likely to take an international employee. For those coming from outside the EU, work visas can be obtained through employers or you can apply for a temporary Spanish residency. After five years of temporary residency, you can apply for a long-term residency, and then after five more years of that, you can apply for citizenship. So a total of 10 years, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, if this is all sounding a bit too good to be true, one thing that might burst the bubble is the cost of living. Bilbao is considered to be one of the most expensive cities in Spain, although it's still cheaper than some of the other similarly sized cities in Europe, such as Florence or Nice. To give you an idea of some basic costs, a meal at an inexpensive restaurant averages to be about $14.50, and a mid-range bottle of wine goes for about $5.75. At the grocery store, a liter of milk is about $1.15, and a loaf of bread will be about 
Utilities could cost you around $140 each month as well, though luckily it's not terribly expensive to get around the city. Public transportation is affordable, reliable, and extensive. As long as you have your rechargeable pass. Bus rides should cost about 66 euro cents. Metro's one or 120, and even the funicular up to the viewpoint to the mountain is under a euro. But the main cost, as usual, comes down to housing. A one bedroom apartment downtown costs around $1,000 a month, while a centrally located three bedroom apartment would go for around $1,500. If you were hoping to buy rather than rent, the average city center price is around $4,050 per square meter and something a bit further from downtown would be more like $3,050 on average. Though it may be slightly more expensive than other parts of Spain, Bilbao really does have quite a lot going on for it. From the scenic location to the numerous cultural activities, the variety of education opportunities. The city is focused on preserving its green spaces and expanding its infrastructure while staying sustainable. So hopefully this place should only get better as time goes on. Now Bilbao does sound pretty amazing on paper, but does it hold up in person? Let's talk about it. What do you think of Bilbao? I mean, I like Bilbao. We've been several times, uh, having lived in Madrid, traveled to Bilbao, like it. Um, there's a lot to say about it, actually. Like, a lot of kind of subjective things. Okay. For example, people. Yeah. Right? Um, I found the people to be pretty nice. Friendly. Pretty, I like... Think so, for a big city. Yeah. Um, like, pretty easy to get on with. Uh, like friendly enough even though we're clearly foreigners not speaking Spanish very well or Basque. Or Basque. Yeah, that's a hard language actually. So like in that regard, I liked it. Comparing it to Madrid for sure. Madrid, yeah. Madrid and Barcelona, uh, although Barcelona is friendlier than Madrid, uh, neither of those are that friendly. Right. Yeah. yeah, I get that. And sometimes you might say, oh, it's because it's a big city, there's a lot going on, but I think it also comes down to the people. I think when we travel around the Basque region, the people do tend to be friendlier. Yeah, San Sebastian is uh, is just kind of up the road and uh, and people are friendly there too. Yeah, that's true. So what do you think of it as a city? Is it too big, too small? I think it's actually the perfect size. I think um, I compare it a lot to Porto, which is where we live now, in terms of the way it feels size. I'm not talking necessarily about geographical area, because you know sometimes you could live in a city and it doesn't feel big, but actually ge geographically it's big and, and maybe tricky to navigate. I don't feel that way in Bilbao. I feel like a lot of Bilbao is, is walkable, very walkable. If it's not a flat area, then it might have an elevator. Yeah, so there is that. There are a lot of hills, so you have to take that into consideration. You can still walk it, but hills. But that was so amazing. They had these elevators, these hidden elevators around, I guess you could say, that if you found them, then you could totally cut out massive hills, which was a really cool thing. It's phenomenal. But overall, pretty easy to walk in that sense, like laid out to where you can still walk or maybe take public transportation and you can get around easily without a car. Yeah, tons of natural beauty in the city, like the, the different landmarks, monuments, fountains, uh, parks. There's a lot of that going on, mm -hmm. which I think is way better than here in Porto. Um, I like it better in Bilbao in that regard. They have a lot going on down by the river too, especially around the Guggenheim. You've got playgrounds, you've got the green spaces. It's really pretty to walk around, maybe do um, some activities like sports activities if you want to run down there or bike or something like that. That's a really good area. So they've made that very friendly just to be outside, inviting to be outdoors. Yeah. Food scene's fantastic, the mix of international and local cuisine, and local Basque is, is definitely different than the rest of the country, although they do have like traditional Spanish foods as well, but uh, the Basque foods with the pinchos, the, the kind of like tapas are phenomenal. Good. good, and the wine as well, also good. So the food scene's really nice, you can find a variety of cuisine, which is good. You can definitely feel the eco-friendliness that's going on there, like the yeah. way that the architecture is, the newer stuff, um, feels very like state-of-the-art in that sense, so I do like that they're doing that as well. I would say a little bit of a warning maybe for visitors or if you're considering moving there but you're gonna do like a scouting trip and visit, parking can be tricky. Yeah. Parking can be tricky. The apps didn't tend to work super well for us. There are two apps, yeah, that you could use. Yeah. One didn't work at all. 
the other one we could get working, but it, yeah, it took a bit of doing. And I think what's tricky too is down in like the popular areas, you might have a max of two hours and yeah. then maybe you could top up, but maybe it won't let you depending on what zone you're in. Yes. So then you're like having to move your car. And it's weird because it looks like there's a lot of parking, but sometimes if you're just driving around like and you're trying to find parking at the time, you're like, nothing is available, nothing is open. It's crazy and that actually happened to us, just driving around like just trying to find a parking spot. Yes. But the reason for that is we had a switch up with plans and we were parked down this smaller side road and yeah. there looked to be a little bit of shenanigans that could be going on there. So yeah, I think, I, safety -wise. I think it's important to mention this. Uh, Bilbao, although it's known to be family friendly, it's also statistically one of the most dangerous cities in Spain. Which now, seems crazy. I thought that was a crazy yeah, stat when yeah, I read that. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't yeah. feel uh, in danger or uncomfortable until this moment that we had where we had our car parked kind of like Kaylee said on a side street, although it was fairly well lit. It wasn't like well trafficked, foot traffic wise. And uh, we went to take our bags and put them in the car and then we were gonna spend like half a day walking around the city before we left. So we had checked out of the hotel. Well, right where the car was parked, there was kind of a group of guys just sitting around like hanging out, hanging yeah. out doing nothing. And for us to put our stuff in the car and then walk away, would kind of be not smart. Yeah, <laughs> stupid. So then we had to move the car uh, down to some of the areas we were going to walk to, and then we drove around forever looking for parking. So yeah. that was a bit of a pain. So parking can be difficult, uh, and then safety is something to consider. Take safety's, a look at those numbers. Yeah, safety is definitely something to consider, considering the data, yes, right? Yes. Uh, you know, you can go based on feeling and how a place feels, but like if the numbers say something different, then there's something in that then if you're there long term, you Something generally will become one of those numbers, right? It's kind of how it goes. Yeah. So definitely if you're looking to live there, take a look at the safety and see how you're comfortable with that. Yeah. But a visit would be good as well. Cause like we said, walking around yeah. day and night, like felt fine, didn't feel uncomfortable, but numbers don't lie, I guess. That's right. So I guess we are to the point where we need to ask the question, would you expat that? And that means, would you want to live there for uh, you know, a few years, let's say one to five years. Yeah, yeah. like a midterm range. Midterm. Okay, I'm just gonna go quick on this one. I would say yes, I would live there. I thought that, okay, I would like to take safety into consideration, so just being aware of that, but I really like the feel of the city. I mm -hmm. think that it's quite big. There are different neighborhoods that would be nice to live in. Um, being down by the water would be really cool as well, just because of the playgrounds and the outdoor space and the family things that, that are going on. There was like live music and you grab drinks and that was kind of near the playground so the kids can play. So it, it seems like you could have a comfortable life there. So I would say yes. You? Yes, I'll quickly answer that. Yes, um, I really like Bilbao. Again, there is the safety element, but going based on feeling, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't feel I didn't feel unsafe there at all. Um, okay, the weather can be dodgy at times, but we're cool. used to that. Yeah, we're used to in that the here winter, in Porto. Some rain. The airport is good, and you have many flights to kind of get around. So one of the things we love to do is travel and it would be a decent travel base. Maybe yeah. not as good as Barcelona or Barajas in Madrid, but you can find a lot of cheap flights to travel around Europe. Yeah, I, th I think they have a lot of good options. It's a pretty good airport for the size of the city and where it's located. But one thing we also did talk about was Bilbao can be quite expensive for a Spanish city. I think a lot of people think, oh, I'll move to Spain and cost of living will go way down. Mm. Well, Bilbao is one of the more expensive cities, so you do have to take that into consideration as well. You didn't talk about that. Normally, you, Josh loves talking about budget and money, but he's still a yes, so that's well, interesting. I feel like it, because it's, it's on par now with Porto. I mean, if you yeah. if you kind of compare the prices of things, maybe their housing, um, depending, is a little more than Porto. Yeah. Uh, however, the availability is better there. Like in Spain, you tend to find a little more availability in housing than right now what we're seeing in in Portugal. That's true. So maybe that like brings costs down because of supply and demand. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it definitely shot prices up here in Portugal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So as far as expenses go, if you want to compare Barcelona, because that's another expensive city compared to Bilbao, and see which one is more expensive, then check out this video right here. Now let's get moving. Bye.